Claire's diagnosis was changed on October 2, 2013. It was a long meeting with Hassel. We got very few answers, but we asked a hell of a lot of questions. We asked for second opinions and referral to other cancer treatment centers. We asked for a clear explanation of how and why Claire's diagnosis had changed. Of course, to this day, we don't have the answers to those questions. On the basis of a second opinion, Claire's diagnosis has been changed. She has GBM. She will be dead in about seven months. What? How can that be? You told us that her illness was curable. How can a diagnosis change so much? I didn't change the diagnosis. But I am bound by it. I can't go saying to the pathologist, Hey, I don't agree with you and I'm going to treat for something else. I don't understand how this has happened. It doesn't make sense. If it makes you feel any better, I couldn't get my head around it either. I still can't. Tom Robertson had to walk me through it a few times before it made sense to me. How did he explain it to you? I want to know what he told you that made it make sense. It doesn't matter. The diagnosis has changed. I don't want to destroy any hope you have, but no one survives GBM. We want second opinions, and referral to another treatment center. Uh-huh. And treatment for both GBM and MB, so that if the change in diagnosis is wrong, at least we are actively tackling the alternative. Well, we have to sort out the radiation treatment, but I'll start Claire on temozolomide. It's the optimal treatment for both GBM and MB. Okay, well that's something, anyway. Hassel lied about the chemo. Temozolomide is not indicated for first presentation MB. He lied about having to be walked through the diagnosis change by Robertson. If things were as Hassel would have us all believe that, on solid grounds, Robertson changed the diagnosis, even when such radical changes never occur, then there would be nothing to be walked through. There would be nothing for an oncologist to get their head around, other than the fact that such radical diagnostic changes are unknown. It would be a simple matter. Robertson was wrong and Dellison was right. What on earth would Robertson have to explain to Hassel on several occasions? Clearly, nothing. He made no notes about our concerns or requests for opinions and referral. He made no note of the change in diagnosis, even though it changed the picture from cure to certain death. He told us that Claire would be dead in seven months because she had GBM. Yet she only had GBM because he had decided that she did, not because the local pathologist had diagnosed it. Hussel knew very well that he had unilaterally set Claire on a trajectory for death. He subsequently fought everything we tried to do to save her. Absolutely everything, yet no one wants to ask him or his colleagues about Claire's treatment and death, or if they do. They simply accept denials on their face, and Hussel remains free to harm children, perhaps even kill them, as he did Claire.